Hi, I'm Toys Bag Zen. This is my third Mask Thunderhawk I've owned. And in all three of these vehicles, none of them came with the exhaust pipes on the bottom of the doors. Today, I'm going to take you through the process of making new exhaust pipes out of styrene. Now here is a copy of the instructions. You can see how the Thunderhawk changes from car to jet mode. Here they call them laser guns. And somewhere else, somewhere in some literature, I saw them called exhaust pipes. So I'm just going to call them exhaust pipes for now on. So this is going to be a difficult build because there are so many different shapes and textures to this piece, and it has to function. And you can see on the other side where it goes into the door, it's also hollow on the bottom. So let's get started. First we have to do some measurements to find out how wide I need to make the part. I'm going to do this by printing out the parts and then printing to size. And this is my donor Thunderhawk I'm going to use because in order to do this I'm going to be using this car and opening and closing the doors over and over and over again and I'd rather do that on my donor car than my really nice version that I have here. So I'm going to use polystyrene. This is uh, the thin styrene that you can get. I'm also going to use a thicker styrene also. I pulled some really nice examples off of the internet and I printed them so that the part that goes into the car is 31 millimeters. And then I had to make a mirror image of that. So most apps that you get, or computer apps or phone apps, whatever you're using, iPads, most printing options will allow you to flip the image so that you get uh, the opposite side of the image. So that's what I did here. I'm just checking my measurements. I want it to be 31 millimeters. And after I print them, I always want to check my, my measurements to make sure that they are what I measured before. So on the piece of paper, I measured 31 millimeters. And the opening of the door is 32. And you can see that the thin styrene fits in there nice and snug. It's not too tight. So I think that's, that thickness is going to work perfect. So let's get started. I'm going to start cutting everything out, measuring using my template. And uh, once I get everything drawn up on my styrene, then I'm going to cut everything out with an X-Acto knife. Here we go.
Okay, now let's cut out the shape. Polystyrene is really easy to cut. You just need to cut it with a really sharp knife. Um, this is just like a, a box cutter. You just need to score it like two or three times and then, then you can just fold it and it will break. Now if you're cutting a weird shape like this, you may have to cut fully through the styrene in some spot so that you can bend it so that it breaks at your score lines. And that looks really good. You can use some files and and whatever. I'm just gonna compare it to my my printout just to make sure that it's as close as possible. I can always shape it as I'm going, but I'm also gonna use my Thunderhawk to, you know, test everything first. So the little tabs here, those go inside the door. Those need to be cut a little thinner. I use my file to file them down. I want it to have a rounded edge because, well, they need to go in there and clip in without breaking. I'm just going to use some some files here to file the slide out a little bit deeper. And the original part had like a rounded slot on the bottom, so I'm going to use my file here to to create that wider slot, deeper slot. 
it also makes everything a little bit more uh, 90 degrees because some of my cuts were just done by eye and I try to use a ruler but sometimes your your knife will slip and I'll use my round file to make a round shape on the bottom all right let's try to fit this in this time again There, that's how it should work. And it's nice and tight, feels good. And now we're gonna see if it closes. Now when it closes, the back part is touching the wheel. So I'm gonna to have to cut that back a little bit because it needs to go, it can't, it shouldn't go farther than the silver trim on the bottom. It shouldn't go any farther than that. And the front of it only goes as far as the front of the door. So let's trim that off. There, that's better. So I trimmed it up just a little bit more. It's hard to get back out, so I don't want to break it. But there we go. So there's my two pieces, and what I've done on the other piece is I cut that long strip off because this is supposed to be hollow. Now I know the exhaust pipe is supposed to have round shape to it, but that's okay. I'm going to make it uh, a, a, a square shape with 90 degrees. And um, I want to use the thicker styrene on the top so that I can use some files and some uh, sandpaper and file it round once I get all the details on it. So this Plastrux is plastic weld. It works really, really well with styrene. It says that on the bottle, that it works with styrene and ABS and other plastics, but it doesn't work with every plastic. I think Plastrux makes a um, another plastic weld that is good for the harder plastics like Lego and stuff like that. And this doesn't work very well for that. So if you try to buy this to to uh, use Lego to make things, it probably won't stick. It, there's only like three or four plastics so far that I've noticed it works with very well. And uh, styrene is one of them. So you just have to give it time. What I do is I put it on the styrene on both sides. And then... The, this uh, Plastrux actually dries really quickly. So sometimes you want to get allow the Plastrux to kind of eat away at the plastic to make it almost like a almost like a, a liquid and then and then stick them together. Otherwise uh, they won't stick. Once that's done, then you can brush the Plastrux. Uh, along the edges while it's stuck while the while the two pieces are stuck together and uh, it will help that adhesion this stuff is pretty toxic to smell too so make sure you have a nice ventilated area and I always make sure I just put the the top back on it every time I'm, I'm using it even in between welds it just keeps the smell down but also this stuff evaporates really quickly so it uh, keeps keeps the plastic weld in the bottle
and there's our first one made. Now I have to make the other one for the other side of the Thunderhawk. So I've made the one on for the right side, and now I need to make the laser gun for the left side. So it's the same process. I'm just going to, to do it, and uh, I'll show you what it looks like at the end. And here we go. These are turning out better than I expected. So, so far so good. Now comes the more detailed part, is making all the shapes and then, sh and then shaping the curves uh, into, into the parts. So here's one here that I've already made. I kind of fast forwarded through and showed you and it looks really good. I'm really, really amazed at how this turned out. So there are a few more pieces I have to put in between those semicircular parts, but uh, it seems to be working. It looks really good. And uh, I'm going to show you the process on how I made all those shapes. Oh yeah, and remember, we have to put a, if you look on the left of this laser gun, we have to put a cap on the side, and then we'll cut that and shape it. Okay, so here comes the uh, challenging part, is making the shape. And here's a picture here that I have of uh, the details of the different 3D shapes that we have to cut. Two wide strips and four thin strips. And we're going to cut everything that I'm showing you here. You have to cut that many for each side. So I'm just doing one side here. Because I've already built the first one. So I'm just cutting some strips here. Probably about three millimeters wide. Just take my pliers here and cut them off. Makes it a lot easier when you get small pliers instead of using my fat fingers. <laughs> this makes it things way easier when you have these pliers. These pliers are great too. They are magnetic too, so they're great for when you're working with metal too. Okay, so there's my strips. They're not perfect, but I can cut them to shape uh even for before or even after. So after those shapes, we've got to make just a long thin strip. I'll refer to the pictures of the parts that we're making so that we can keep track of what parts I'm actually cutting out here. Next, we need to cut out some larger squares that we're going to make into almost like a, um, a semicircle. Right now, they're just going to be large squares, but once we weld it to the piece, then we can round the edges with a file.
at the very back of the exhaust where it comes out farther than the back of the door we need to cut that piece off Yeah, you can see it there on the back, on the left-hand side, you can see where I cut that piece out. That's important so that it, the door will close properly and it doesn't get in the way. Now that bottom piece that wraps around the, the, the frame of the bottom, uh, I cut that a little uh, shorter. It was too way too long. But, uh, you know, just looking at pictures online sometimes it's hard to tell exactly what it looks like from what i could tell the way i made this one with the longer bottom uh some of some of the the exhaust pipes or laser guns if you want to call it that some of them did have uh the piece that came out farther um but i decided to not do that because uh, it just looked better without it being longer than, or being deeper than the other side. All right, so I'm just going to use these sanding sticks, and I'm going to sand everything nice and flush, and then we'll do some... Uh, then we'll glue everything together once everything is flush and, uh, and square. And here's my piece. I've got the the end glued on there so that it completes the the shape. Uh, that's where we're gonna. I'm gonna put a paper clip sticking out of it, so it looks like the the laser gun tip. But uh, that comes at the very end, so we need that cap on there so that we can do that. So on the original uh on the original part there are three holes or three circles that are uh in kind of set into the pipes. And so I'm just going to use a drill bit with a pin vise and I'm going to just drill into the plastic. Like I said, the, this top plastic is really thick. I think it's uh, two millimeters thick or something like that, or millimeter and a half thick. So it's much thicker than the stuff that I made the rest of um, the part with. So there's lots of plastic to drill into. Now I'm, gonna, I'm not going to drill too far, just enough to make the shape. Just drill in there just enough so that you can see a, a circle maybe a little bit that's not quite deep enough so let's make it a little deeper and there's three of these and uh, it's important to make sure that um, you put all three circles uh, equally spaced apart and in a straight line <laughs> Otherwise, it will look weird. The first time I made this, um, my circles were a little off, and it did make a difference in how it looked. So you're just going to make sure. Now, you could use a, a smaller drill bit, or you could use something that's pointed to give yourself a pilot hole, or even like a, just a little a pilot um, 
hole so that your drill bit fits in in and doesn't veer off but uh, uh i don't need to i didn't do it and i i did well the second time the first time i did it i they were not evenly spaced at all <laughs> so i made sure that i took my time this time to do it and there you go that's how you make the pipe exhaust holes that's what i'll call them so everything else now is just shaping and gluing these pieces on So these last strips we have to glue on, if you look in the picture, there's one thin one, one wide one, two thin ones, another wide one, and a thin one. So it's thin, wide, thin, thin, wide, thin on the very left side of this picture. You can see it. So that's what we have to do. If you don't get it perfect, don't worry about it. Uh, you can sh Once this is all glued on, you can take your knife and shape them and uh, make the separation separation um, spaces between the strips wider or more round with a file everything all that all that is sh you can shape everything later on you just need to get kind of an, the idea of the shapes and I mean you can get perfect and you can make it really good I'm sure if I make uh, two more of these for my other Thunderhawk, um, they will probably look better than the ones I'm making now. Uh, but it just takes, you know, experience trying to figure out how to do it and then doing it. So this was a really fun project. And there you go. That's it. Now, all I have to do now is uh, cut three more small strips to go in between here and then one in the front and that will complete uh, gluing all the pieces on that I need uh, other than the little laser in the front but we'll do that at the end again like I said before so we're going to shape all of this uh, even with everything glued on I'm going to shape this um, using a bunch of different tools. I'm using a diamond file, I'm using a square file, an X-Acto knife, and then just the blade of an X-Acto knife. And I also have some side cutters. So uh, the nice thing about having a diamond file is it's a, it's a very fine file. So it doesn't make metal... Uh, file marks in the plastic um, it files everything nice and smooth uh, although when we're done filing you can sand things 
uh, with um, and polish everything, polish the plastic with like um, polishing pads or or fine sandpaper. But if you want to get this uh, the plastic to um, shape quickly, you can use a file. And then to make everything kind of smooth and, and looking uh, like it's been molded, you can use an X-Acto knife or any kind of really sharp edge, like a scraper. If you're a woodworker, you know what a scraper is. And um, uh, as long as you have a nice sharp edge, you can use that to scrape away the plastic uh, into, uh, into a round beveled edge. And here I'm just cutting out uh, the, sh the spaces between those strips that I cut earlier. So we're just going to glue those in. Let's paint. I've got two different uh, chrome pens here. I've got a wide tip and I've got a really thin tip. The thin tip is so that I can get it in between uh, some of those spaces that I've made for those little strips there. I love this uh, toy. It's really fun. And uh, it does look like it's missing something without the pipes on the side of the door. So I'm excited to get these on. So um, I probably should have done this before I chromed it. But I'm just taking my pin vise again. I'm going to put a small hole just in the front bottom in that little cap that I put on there earlier. And I'm just gonna drill this with my pin vise. And then I'm just gonna insert 
a small paper clip sticking out and the paper clip is already kind of a chrome chrome color so it should look good I've also made two other ones already and then later on I'm going to chrome pen them and I'll let them sit I'll clean them let them sit for three weeks and then I'll put them on my good Thunderhawk. These ones will go on my older one when I decide to um, when I decide to restore the other one. But this one is looking really good. Well, I'm really happy with that. Those turned out really good. I put some glue in there and I'm just um, making sure that those pieces are sticking out uh, properly. And uh, I'm really happy with that. Now, I just wanted to show you a failed clip. I tried to make the pipes out of the styrene by heating it up and then clamping it down to try to make like a rounded piece of plastic so that I could use that as my pipe. And I'm sure it probably worked if I would have put like something round inside the plastic when I um, bent it so that it would be uniform. But I don't know, it just didn't quite work. And I think it would have been harder to glue the shapes on too because now my plastic was rounded. So I thought I would just show you, I did try different things and uh, this one was kind of a fail, although I think if I tr tried it again, I probably could have made it work, but then it would have been a lot harder to, to glue the shapes on. So I'm glad I did it the way I did it. Maybe some of you can try it this way and see if you have better results than I did. Well, that was a lot of work, but I think it paid off. I think having uh, these parts on really makes a huge difference, and uh, I think it looks great. They function how they should, and uh, I can close the doors. And I think they look really good. I really like the, the exhaust pipes look really good, actually. Um, I wish I hadn't had to touch the chrome when I did these, but uh, I just want to show you that they do work. They do function. Uh, they complete the vehicle. And uh, although I only have one bomb, let's, let's watch it function here. That looks really good. I'm Toys Bag Zen. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Like my videos if you enjoy the content that you're seeing. And I really appreciate all of my subs that I have so far. And I hope that you enjoy my videos. And leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of uh, this repair or this parts build. Um, I, I really enjoyed it and I'm definitely going to be doing probably a couple more. So uh, thanks for watching. See ya.